But I much fear that flies will settle upon the son of Benicius and breed worms about his wounds, so that his body, now dead, will be disfigured, and the flesh will rot. That was in uh, 8th century BC in uh, the Iliad, and what the guy was worried about was the flies landing on the, on the dead soldiers and thus uh, producing maggots over the worms. Aristotle, 400 to 500 years later, was worried or was was saying that still that insects and other organisms, uh, lower organisms, could be spontaneously generated from rotting um, mud or dung. And in the 13th century, Albertus Magnus was still saying the same thing: rotting wood could give worms, decaying fruit could give rise to bees, mulberry leaves to beetles, and there was uh, also the uh, the recipe for mice, and there was a recipe for bees that included burying a dead cow. <laughs> it wasn't until 1668 that Francesco Reddy did his meat in a jar experiment. Which had, uh, an open jar with the flies could uh, the flies could get to the meat and lay their eggs and make maggots, and then he had covered jars. I'm sorry, did you hear that? <laughs> so he had the covered jars, and the, and the flies couldn't get on the meat, and they couldn't make maggots. So, so we tried to do this, we kind of the same experiment, except for. Um, we didn't. <laughs> yes, I'm really disappointed at that. Uh, the, the, the test subjects wore the, uh, the, the, the umbilicus domes for eight days and were compared to the previous eight days in which they did not have the domes. And the, and the lint content was compared. <laughs> before and after. <laughs> and what we found was that with, with the umbilicus covered, I'm using a fancy word that's really belly button. Yeah. <laughs> with that covered, we did not find any lint in the belly button. And so going back to, to, to Reddy's uh, theory, our theory is that there's no lint there. Louis Pasteur here. <laughs> Never will the doctrine of spontaneous generation recover from the mortal blow of the 